Hi, my name is Joe Miro, and today I want to show you how I'm using Sublime Text to be my SQL interactive editor. I really like Sublime Text, and frankly, I really don't like the Microsoft Query Analyzer that I have to use during the day at my day job. So I decided that I would like to try and use the Sublime Text editor as a platform to build an interactive query analyzer. And fortunately, Sublime Text's build system makes that pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you what I did, and ideally, if you can improve upon it, because it can certainly be improved upon, I'd love to hear your ideas. So here we go. First thing I do, and I'm on my home computer, which is a Mac, I don't use Windows at home. Um, in my home directory, I just created a SQL directory, and I have a couple files in there that I'll show you momentarily. Now flipping over to Sublime Text, what I do is I have two panes and I open the editor with a, a group in the top and a group in the bottom. The top group is going to be the place where I write my SQL queries and the bottom group is where I'm going to display the results. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a build system from Sublime Text. Now, I've already done that, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did. If you go into Tools, you can click on Build System and create a new build system. And if you do that, you simply get this untitled Sublime-Build and this syntax right here. And there's a variety of things you can do there. I'm not going to save that, but rather, I'm going to show you the one that I've already created and we'll go ahead and go into preferences and browse packages and come over here to the user packages and in here I have this sql.sublime build and you can see that in my case I'm using PostgreSQL and so I've created a command, what Sublime Text knows as a command in a build system, and essentially I've created a command to run a query in PostgreSQL, reading it from a file, the query, and writing the output to another file. So the first part of this is, and you can read more about the anatomy of a command, <coughs> Sublime Command Online. I'll just give you a high-level overview and it should be pretty apparent what's going on here. I'm creating a command and as you can see down here, this is a JSON text. The, the text type is JSON. And so each portion of the command line instruction, you have to put in its own set of quotation marks inside these square brackets and then delimited by a comma. So just to run through here really quickly, this is PSQL, which is the Postgres command line utility. I'm saying run as user Postgres and minus D is my database name. Minus O is where I want my results to go to. And you can see I've put them in users, Joe, SQL, results.txt. Minus A is something I was trying that doesn't seem to have any effect, so I'm going to skip over that. And so is this minus E. Minus F and then dollar file. What this basically says is take the content of the current file and use that as the input. So this dollar file is a shorthand within the Sublime Text build system to refer to the current file. And we're passing that in interactively to the minus F parameter on the PSQL command line, which means it is the input for the SQL text. So that was a lot, but uh, we got through it also. Um, just in case, I'm running from somewhere else. I'm telling that Sublime Text, my working directory, is usersjoe.sql. I probably don't need to do that because I'm giving an absolute path to my results text file here, but I'm not sure. Perhaps it might help with the dollar file. I don't really plan on ever running queries anywhere other than this SQL directory, but with that, let's go on and give this thing a spin. So I can basically just come up here and begin to type a command and 
I'm going to go ahead and just issue a command from the uh, against the information schema tables table and if I hit command B on a Mac or control B on Windows it will run the build system and essentially it's going to execute that command we just looked at and so if I do this you can see down here I get a message in the Sublime Text console finished in 0.6 seconds. Now it didn't refresh automatically and that's one thing I'd like to figure out how to do a little bit differently but if I simply click on here I get my results and you can see that I have the results of my query and we very much have an interactive query editor. There was no need to save that file before I ran it just running the build by hitting command B will save and then run the file. One of the main reasons I wanted to use Sublime Text as my interactive query tool is because I just like the editor so much better than the SQL Server Management Studio um, editor that I use at work and I do use Sublime Text at work quite a bit and so I was looking to replace the um, SQL Server query utility and one of the things I really like about Sublime Text is the ability to make pretty powerful snippets. And we'll go ahead and do that now. If we take a look at this output here, you can see that these are a bunch of system catalogs in Postgres. And if we get down here, we can see that these tables labeled as public, where the schema is public, are actually my application tables. So I don't really care that much about uh, this particular or all these other particular tables, just the public tables. Now maybe at another time I might, I might want to query against a different schema. So one thing I can do is I can go create a snippet and so that I don't have to type this query over and over again. And so I'm going to go ahead and go into tools. In fact, first I'm going to copy this into the clipboard and I'm going to go down to snippets, new snippet, and I will go ahead and paste this text in. But before I do, let's take a look at the structure of a snippet. It's basically XML with this character data piece of text here in this example. And it's a simple snippet that simply displays hello and a, um, a tab stop, if you will, and then some more text and another tab stop. And so these, these tab stops or these placeholders are really powerful features. A lot of other text editors have them, such as TextMate. But uh, I think it's going to be really helpful in our interactive query builder that we're building here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my statement. And I'm going to say where table schema equals and we'll put one thing I like I love about sublime text is the ability to highlight a bit of character a string of characters and hit one key in this case the single quote and put single quotes on both sides of that and I'll go ahead and terminate the rest of that statement and put my semicolon there to uh, terminate my SQL command now down here there are some commented out areas including one called tab trigger. I'm going to highlight all of, all of that text and using the sublime shortcut key of command forward slash will uncomment that will toggle the the comment character and here I'm going to simply type the word schema and that will that followed by the tab will prompt us to uh, see if we want to indeed use that snippet. So I'll go ahead and save this and we'll save it under it defaults to the uh, packages user directory and so there's a certain name format that this has to follow and so we'll type in schema dot sublime hyphen snippet and when we save this, 
that snippet is now available for a file. And in fact, if I get rid of this text here, and I type in, I just begin to type in uh, the word schema, and you can see that I have my schema available here, and I can go ahead and hit enter, and now it has not only pasted in that text, but it is highlighting on the tab stop that we put. And I left it, uh, the text this, I could have put schema name here or something to that effect, but we'll go ahead and type in public. And now when I hit command B, we've run our query again, and you see that we only have tables in the public schema printing there. Now, one thing I really like about using this text area, this file is output for text, is that if I want to go back and see the results that I did for a query a few queries ago, because it's simply a text editor, I can simply hit Command Z and go back and Control or Command Y rather to go forward and I can go see all those results <clears throat> without running those queries again. And so that's kind of nice. Now, one thing I would really love to do to improve this is I'd really like it if there was a way to somehow write a program, for example, perhaps in, in Objective-C or in Ruby or Java, and have a program that is nothing more than a bunch of grid cells. And I could then get rid of the text output and when I run my command, it would write it to a file that would be immediately read and parsed by this grid program running in the background and put my, well, really not in the background, in the foreground, but behind the scenes, it would read this file and display the text results in this table, this grid table, and populate all of the cells with the column headers and all of that good stuff. So this has just been a brief demonstration of how you can use Sublime Text 2 as an interactive query tool and I would love to hear ideas from you on additions that you make to this idea to improve it further still. Thanks for listening.